Good morning ladies and gentlemen, my name is Napoleon Total and today we're back with another enlisted video. And this time we're going to be doing the Soviet Union Tier 1 for our enlisted review. Of course, this video has been made possible for the friends at Discord, meaning if you haven't liked, subscribe, or joined Discord, I highly suggest that you do. With that said, let's start with the weapons, the lineups, the perks, and finally end with the suggestions. This is the Soviet Union Tier 1, let's get started. Starting with the weapons, we have the Mosin M1907. This weapon was actually the first rifle that was made for the Soviet, or should I say the Russian Empire, right after the Russo-Japanese War. So that's going to be interesting. Follow up. Next up, we have the Mosin M91 Dragoon, which is a variant of the Mosin Nagat for the cavalry. So that's going to be interesting. After that, we have the Mosin M1938 Carbine, which is actually a very good weapon, if you ask me. All of them are actually pretty good. That said, to recap the rifle section, the Soviet Union begins with the three Mosin rifles, of which I personally believe the Mosin M1938 carbine is the best. Of course, you also have the Mosin M9130 sniper rifle, which is essentially what it says, uh, Mosin M9130 sniper rifle. And it's pretty good, it's on par with the Gewehr 41 and the Springfield sniper rifle, so that's that. In terms of assaulters, the Soviet Union at this tier is very, very lacking. For one, we have the PPD-34. It has a 20-round magazine, or should I say a 25-round magazine, but it has a rate of fire of 800, which is very devastating at this tier. Following up, we have a Taz B, which is a very good two-shot round killing spree shotgun, which is very good and able to hit kill everybody, but the downside is that it is only a shotgun and only has two rounds. So that's that. In terms of heavy weapons, we have the PTRD-41, which is a uh, early version of the PTRS-41. In my opinion, I highly suggest that you don't use it, because at this tier, the tanks are easily able to be taken out using explosive packs. And following that, we have the RM-38. This is essentially a Soviet mortar for the Soviet Union that is chambered in 50mm. Of course, like with all mortars, it really depends on your position and how you fired the mortars, so that's gonna be that. In terms of tanks, we have the T-60, the T-26, BT-7, and the T-70, of which I personally would just stick with the BT-7, because that not only is that thing fast, but it has a very good fast firing gun. Either that, or you can also stick with the T-70, which is also pretty fast, and it also has a pretty good frontal armor which is much better than the T-26 and the BT-7. But that said, in terms of planes, we have a few options to choose from. As of right now, the best plane for Tier 1 is the I-153M62 in terms of dogfighting. Not only does it have enough rockets to blow everyone apart, but its machine guns are very decent at taking out planes at this tier. The reason why they're so good is not because of the machine guns themselves, it's more of the plane. The this plane has the ability to turn around like nothing's happening and it could just shoot down planes en masse, which is insane if you ask me. Following that, we have the Yak-1 and the LAGG-311, of which, in my opinion, these two planes are very good because they have two 100kg bombs, so that's that, in my opinion. Moving on, we have the Hurricane Mark IIb and the MiG-3. For the Hurricane, this is essentially a British version of the famous Hurricane lent lease to the Soviet Union. It has a 6 ROS-82 rockets, which are very good, not to mention its two 20mm cannons and its 12.7mm machine guns. The MiG-3, on the other hand, is a downgrade in multiple ways with only two 20mm machine guns. So that's that. And that's it. This is all it in terms of vehicles, tanks, and planes for the Soviet Union. Let's move on to the lineups. Starting with the lineups, the one that you will be most likely using is going to be the Medic Squad, so I highly suggest that you bring that, of which you're going to be armed with the PPD-34, because that is much better in my opinion than Taz B. In terms of sniper rifles, I highly suggest that you get the Mosin M9130 sniper rifle, which that thing is a very good sniper rifle. And that said, after that you either have the Engineer Squad, which I highly suggest that you bring, or Infantry Squad, of which I highly suggest that you bring your Engineers to level them up at this Tier 1. Of course, you have the grand option to select between tanks or planes, I highly suggest that you select the planes. You have a wide variety of planes, these include the I-153M62, the Yak-1, 
the LAG311, and of course the Hurricane, of which it's really up to you. I personally like the I-153 for its dogfighting skills, the Yak-1 for its bombs, and the Hurricane for its rockets, so that's that. In terms of tanks, highly suggest that you get the T-70. That said, that is all it for the lineups, let's move on to perks. In terms of perks, it's actually quite simple. Highly suggest that you get plus 75% meta pack usage speed, minus 40% vertical recoil, and vitality. So that's that. In terms of tanks, their perks, highly suggest that you get ancient type of ammunition without losing reload progress perk, and the plus 20% tank gun reload speed perk, which is very, very good. In terms of planes, like with the Germans, I highly suggest that you get minus 60% damage when hard landing with a parachute perk. Everything else, you can decide what to get. That said, that is all it for the Soviet Union in Tier 1. What my personal opinion is for the Soviet Union is to personally level up your guys. So that can be either with the Assaulter squads, or should I say the Medic squads, and your Engineer squads. At this Tier 1, I highly suggest that you max out everything in terms of what you can get, and then move on to Tier 2. But that said, that's all it for Tier 1 Soviet Union. I'll see you next time for Tier 2 Soviet Union. Have a great day, and I'll see you in the next one.